All right, so now you've successfully set up your own Rust server, and right now it is currently running at 100% vanilla. If you're not at this stage, check out the video in the top right hand corner right now because you need to have done that before you can do what we're about to do today. And what is it that we're going to be doing today? Well, because I know you already read the title of this video, you already know that we're going to be adding oxide to your server. So stay tuned, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to do in order to add oxide to your locally hosted server. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you guys some of the ins and the outs of the different things that you can do on your server. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And of course, if you take any value out of this video, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up for me. It's the easiest way for you guys to help out my channel. All right, so like I said in the video intro, we're gonna be adding Oxide to our vanilla Rust server. But there are a couple of things that we have to do before we can actually physically install oxide onto this server and these are important steps and i'll explain why as we're going through so if you followed my previous tutorial on how to actually set this server up this batch file is going to look very familiar to you but i do want to bring your attention to one specific line that we have to deal with and that is line three basically what line three does is it calls on steam cmd it opens up that application it logs in anonymously and then it runs an update from face punch if there is one but even if there isn't an update let's say something Something has changed in your server somewhere like a mistake was made or whatever a file went missing whatever if you run this batch file again it's gonna fix all of those errors or changes or whatever might have happened in the meantime so if we left this batch file just the way it is right now every time we restart the server it's going to put everything back to vanilla settings and why is that important because oxide actually modifies a couple of different files inside of our server folders so if we were to install oxide on this server right now and then for whatever reason we restarted the server Server, like a lot of server owners do they have a scheduled restart time as soon as this batch file restarted itself it would wipe out oxide so it would put this server back to a vanilla server even though we had oxide installed on it but we do still need to have the ability to update our server let's say face punch puts out a hot fix for something or for whatever reason they've pushed out an update we still need to have the ability to run that update so that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually remove this line 3 and we're going to remove the entire thing so I just have that entire line selected selected right now and I'm just going to do control C control V which copies it to my clipboard and cuts it out of our document and we can just move that up so that it looks good and so for right now we're done with our batch file we can actually save this and we can just forget about it for now so then what I'll get you to do is actually start a new notepad plus plus document we're just going to paste that information that we pulled out of our original batch file into this new document once we have that done we can save this new document as a batch file and we want to call this new batch file something that you're going to remember that this is the file that you need to run in order to update your server so in my case I'm just going to call this updater so I've called the file updater.bat we're also going to change this to all types and then we can just click on save so now you can see in my rust server folder I still have my original rust server startup batch file but now I also have this updater batch file down here so if for whatever reason I needed to run an update on this server I just run this batch file right here but before we can run an update on the server of course we have to make sure our server is offline so you can just type restart or quit or you can just x out like I'm going to do right now Okay, so once the server is offline and not going to restart, if you have a restart loop built in, we can just run this updater.bat. And it's gonna look very similar to what you've seen in the past. And luckily for this video, I did actually have an update to do. One thing I forgot to tell you as we were setting up our updater batch, if you run your updater batch and it immediately closes once it's done, just like you just saw right there, the reason for that is because I didn't remove the quit command at the end of the file. So if you have a look at the end of the updater batch file that we've now created, there's this quit command at the very end. So we can just delete that and take that space out of there as well. And we want to save this file again, and we can just minimize that. And we can run this updater again, just so that you can see what it's actually doing. So it's going to log in and it's going to check. Now that update already ran so of course it's going to say this app is already up to date but it doesn't close this window because sometimes that window is going to close so fast that you don't even actually see what it tried to tell you you don't have to remove that quick command but it is easier so that if there's errors or whatever going on during your update you have an opportunity to actually see those errors before it closes this console window all right so once we're done with our update we can of course close steam cmd and then we want to cruise over to umod.org and we want to click on games at the very top and we want to grab rust and of course we want to download this file right here it's 
it's the top one. So the top one is for Windows. If we scroll down just a little bit, they also have a Linux build there as well. So we're going to download the Windows version. And of course, depending on your internet speed, it might take a couple of minutes for it to actually download. Once we have Oxide downloaded into our downloads folder, we want to extract that. So right click, I use 7-zip, WinZip works, WinRAR, whatever file zipping application you use, you can use that to extract it as well. So we're just going to extract it here. And then we're going to end up with this Rust dedicated underscore data file. You of course can just copy paste this from one folder into your original server folder, or you can drag and drop. But if you drag and drop, I want to caution you on something. If we drag this folder out of our downloads folder and accidentally drop it into one of these other folders right here, it's going to go inside that folder. That's not what you want. You just want to drop it somewhere in your open space so that it goes into this actual folder that we're dealing with and not into one of these other folders. And it's going to prompt you to replace a couple of files. And of course, we want to click on replace the files at this destination. And that's it. We've essentially installed Oxide into our server. We can then run our original server batch file and you'll see that the load up process looks a little bit different from what it did before because we're no longer logging into Steam. We're no longer checking for an update. And of course, we're no longer running that update if there even is one. And as you can see there, it's loading some extensions. It's looking for plugins, etc., etc. Once you get past the first part, the load up is going to look very similar to what it has in the past. And there you go. Once your server is back up and running, you now have an Oxide modded server. And if we go back to the file folder where the server is actually being ran out of, you'll now see that there's a new folder in there called Oxide. And this, of course, is where you would drop your plugins in there. Your configuration files will automatically generate in the configurations folder. And this is where you're going to do most of your work as far as modding your server goes. So I tried to break this down into as many steps as I possibly could. I wanted to make sure that this was absolutely clear what you have to do and why you have to do it in order to get Oxide running on your locally hosted server. This process, by the way, is transferable if you're using a dedicated server and you use RDP to log into that server. It's essentially the exact same environment as I'm sure if you're using a dedicated server, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This looks very, very similar. Now, for anybody that's actually paying a hosting service for their Rust server, they usually have just a simple box that you would select that you want to actually run Oxide on your server. It doesn't have to be this difficult. This is only for people that are local hosting their server or they're using a dedicated server that doesn't have any kind of a Rust interface. All right, so that's how you install Oxide. Now you can go in and start adding plugins and start changing your server to exactly how you want it to perform. Of course, as always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. Or of course, you can join the Discord and I'd be more than happy to help you guys in there. That's it for this week's video. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So until then, I hope you guys are staying safe and taking care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.